Morgan that I overhauled. I'm not a musician, but I do like to over, overhaul organs. We're gonna go down now to the office and show you the United States in prophecy and how they got it wrong about Gog and Magog. This is gonna be very interesting. Many people are looking at the war in Israel and saying that this is the fulfillment of Ezekiel 38 and 39 or the cusp of the fulfillment of that prophecy. They're saying that Russia is going to come down and invade Israel from the north along with the five nations mentioned in Ezekiel 38. That's not correct. I'm going to show you what the Bible actually says. So we're going to show you that most people have gotten it wrong. Why? Because there is this ethnocentrism that sees Russia as the enemy, sees the Arabs as the enemy, and looks to place them in all the prophecies where bad people do bad things. I'm not saying Russia's good uh, by any means, nor that the Arabs are righteous in what they're doing. I'm just saying the Bible prophecy is specific. It's not vague, it's not general, it's detailed, and we know exactly what's going to happen. And this it's not it. It could be leading into it. It could be the developing of conditions. And I, I think it is. But it's not that prophecy being fulfilled. Now here it is in Ezekiel chapter 38. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog. We, we've always heard that that's Russia. The chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. So it it says that descendants of Gog and Magog are Meshach and Tubal and prophesy against him and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I'm against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. So there's a lineage there. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them. So here are three countries, there'll be five, three countries that are with Gog and Magog. And Gog and Magog is called them, plural, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and his bands, the house of Togomar of the north quarters, and all his bands and many people with thee. Now it's understood well that Togomar is Turkey, and Turkey is certainly north of Israel. Gomer is another issue. It's We'll deal with that. And of course, we know who Persia is. We know who Ethiopia is. And we know who Libya is. I'd point out to you right now that though Persia is Iran, Ethiopia and Libya are not involved in this present war. They're no, nowhere near are they involved in it. Now, so who is this Gog and Magog that I used to say was Russia just because I was voicing what everyone else was saying? So the Bibles are really only source. We got history. We can look at history. We can see and trace these nations. But the Bible is the place we begin. These, now this is way back in Genesis 10. And this is after Noah comes off of the boat with his three sons. It gives us the lineage of Shem, Ham, and Japheth, Noah, Noah's three sons, and tells us the lineage and how it evolved, how it developed. So we find that a fascinating the sons of Japheth, now Japheth is what you'd call the white race, the Caucasians. The sons of Japheth were Gomer and Magog. Okay, now we know where Magog begins. And Medidia and Javan and Tubal and Meshach. Now we know the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And Tyrus and the sons of Gomer were Ashkenaz and Rifath and Togomar, and that's Turkey. 
the sons of Javan, now these are all still the Japhitic, uh, Gentile, uh, white race people. The sons of Javan were Elisheth and Tarshish and Kittim and Dodanine. These, now this is important, by these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands. Notice the word isles. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, plural, every one after his tongue, many tongues, and their families in their nations. Gog and Magog is many nations from the Japhetic line. Now here's a map. Here's Shem, Ham, and Japheth and the divisions, the directions they went after the flood and how they divided up. Notice Japheth up on the top left corner and the names that we just read, we see Gomer, Magog, Medidia. These are historically where they settled, Japheth, Tubal, Meshach, Tyrus, Ashkenaz, Riphath, Togomar, and Elishan. Now, there's one more. Kittim. And way over here is, on the left side, is Tarshish in southern Spain. Now, looking at it, this is a map of Europe, Asia, and Africa. That's the direction that the three sons of Noah went. And look at this. This is the way that the sons, the Japhetic race, spread. And all of those today are Japhetic, are Gog and Magog, not Russia alone. Although you see Magog way up in the top corner there, and that's the reason most people have said that Magog was Russia. But we see from this list in Genesis chapter 10, that it is the Gentiles. We're going to look at that further. And shall go out to deceive the nations. This is Revelation 28. And they shall go out to deceive the nations, which are in the four quarters of the earth. This important passage. Gog and Magog. Now where is Gog and Magog located in the future? In Revelation 20, Gog and Magog are located nations in the four quarters of the earth. That means all over the world, north, south, east, and west, to gather them together to battle the number of whom is the sand of the sea. This settles it. Gog and Magog is not limited to Russia. Russia is part of it, but not limited. Basically, what we're looking at is the United Nations invading Israel. That's not happening right now. It will happen. Now, the Northern Federation of Magog, Meshach, Tubal, and Gomer encompasses Look at it carefully. The British Isles, which is the Celtics, the Gauls, the Irish, the Welts, the Britons, that's Gomer. The Scots, Magog, according to the Milesian genealogy. Anglo-Saxons, which is Gomer, Magog, and Meshach. France, Gaul, Britons, Gomer, Franks, Goths, other Germanic peoples. Gomer, Magog, and Meshach. And Gassans and Tubal. Okay, Spain, Celtiberians, Gomer and Tubal, the Basque, Tubal, Goss, Meshach. The United States, every one of the above mentioned through the leadership is from the British, Irish, Stock, Gomer, and Magog. So the United States is <laughs> Gog and Magog. Not altogether, but part of it. So this invasion of Israel coming in the future from the north is going to be an act of a portion of the United Nations. Uh, it's going to be a, an attack against Israel, an anti-Semitic attack. Ezekiel 38, look at this. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. After many days, talking to Israel, thou shalt be visited. In the latter years, thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword. That happened 1948. And is gathered out of many people. 1948 Jews came from many different nations. Against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but is brought forth out of the nations, the United Nations, 
brought forth the nation of Israel, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. That's all in this book right here that I wrote, Israel, Gog, and Magog, and the details on how I arrive at all of these conclusions. Thou shalt ascend and come up like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, and thy bands and many people with thee. This is speaking of Gog and Magog, the Gentile nations. Therefore, thou son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, and that's a prophecy against the United States, Britain, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, the Japhetic race. Behold, I'm against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back, and I'll leave but the sixth part of thee, and I'll cause thee to come up from the north parts, and I'll bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. Only one-sixth of the invading force will survive. And I will smite the bow out of thy left hand and will cause thy arrows to fall out of thy right hand. See, don't use bow and arrows anymore. Do you know what our missiles are called? They're called the arrows. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel. Thou shalt, thou and all thy bands and the people that is with thee. And I will give thee unto ravenous beasts of every sort to the beast of the field to be devoured. Thou shalt fall upon the open field for I have spoken it, say of the Lord. And back to Ezekiel, and I will send a fire when this invasion takes place, I'll send a fire on Magog and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles. Remember the passage where uh, in Revelation where he speaks of Magog being the nations dwelling in the isles? Them that dwell carelessly in the isles. That's a good description of the United States and the Western world, basically, dwelling carelessly. And they shall know that I am the Lord. So there's going to be a fire back home when this invasion takes place a fire in the nations. And this shall be the plague wherewith I will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. There, now a lot of people think that this destruction in Israel is going to be Israel using nukes. No, if it did, there'd be a return of nukes. No, Israel is said to be at that point a, a, a land of unwalled villages, a place that's defenseless. Probably the UN has uh, uh, taken Israel's ability to defend itself away by that point. But here's what happens. It's something from God that the people know is God. They don't blame it on a nuclear war, nuclear um, bomb that Israel set off. They know that God did it. Their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongues shall consume away in the mouth while they stand up on their feet. That's the kind of destruction you would get from a nuclear explosion. But this is something God does. And by the way, it takes Israel seven months before they can go into the place and cleanse it. And then it takes seven years to clean up the aftermath of this destruction. Seven years and seven months. And, it, and people are of continual employment, it says, are called out and given the job of just cleaning up the land in the northern part of Israel. That's where the war is being fought right now with Hezbollah in the northern part. But this is not the fulfillment of Ezekiel 38 and 39. As much as we would like to uh, hasten the day of the Lord's return and think that, okay, it's here right now. It's not, not according to Scripture. So if you want more detail on that, get this Prophecy of Magog and Israel, Ezekiel 38 and 39. It's a little book, but it's very detailed and uh, full of pictures. So if you can't read, you can look at the pictures. I don't make any money off that, so you don't enrich me by buying one. All right, that's it for today.